automatically warm up. It takes time. So you run a model, and sure enough, it turns out that the PDO, which is that dashed line there coming out of the model, that's the temperature change I get from just putting the PDO modulated clouds into the model. Uh, the gray line is the observations again. That's our best uh, estimate for the last 100 years of surface temperatures. And then here's what I, what I get when I add carbon dioxide. The PDO gives two-thirds of the long-term warming. The extra C CO2 gives one-third. Is, is this the explanation for global warming? I don't know. But this was the first thing I came up with as a possibility. Now, if we had, rather than me, who isn't funded to do this because I wouldn't be able to get funded to do it because somebody would kill the proposal because I'm trying to disprove man-made global warming, if we had hundreds of, of researchers and billions of dollars that had been put into climate models, analyzing data to see maybe to what extent Mother Nature might, might be responsible for global warming, how much more might we have learned? So I'm just saying, here's something you know one guy can do that isn't even a climate modeler with a simple one equation climate model. And by the way, it doesn't matter that it's simple. All global climate models, no matter how many tens of thousands of lines of computer code they have, have to reduce to one simple equation, which basically just says the temperature goes up if you've got more energy accumulating than is going out, but then it's modified by feedback. That's all it is. That's the model. It runs in an Excel spreadsheet. Well, if you were sharp, you might have noticed I said, what if I assume there were cloud changes with the PDO? I have no evidence of that yet. I just said, what if I you know, get, to, get to change the clouds based on the PDO value? Well, we have this five years of most recent data. We would need 50 years at least of really accurate satellite data to really analyze this problem. And we don't have it. We have maybe five or 10 years of our best data, all during the positive phase of the PDO. But if we just look at the last five years, here's the PDO index just zeroed in on the last five years. I put this curve through it that's kind of smooth out the relationship. And when you look at the behavior of clouds from one of the other instruments, on the satellite, you do indeed see that during the positive phase, there is an accumulation of energy in the system causing warming. And during the negative phase, there's an extra loss. OK, so another piece of evidence in support of the general idea that maybe Mother Nature is causing most of the global warming. Again, this is stuff somebody should have done 15 years ago. OK, but the IPCC was not set up to look for natural reasons for climate change. They were set up to study the impact of mankind on climate, and they've had blinders on. They haven't been looking at alternative hypotheses for why there might have been the warming. And that you always need to do that in science. Too often we've been wrong in science based on the first hypothesis of how something works. OK, so maybe. Maybe Mother Nature really did cause the medieval warm period. This is 2,000 years of reconstructed temperatures based on 18, it's just an average of 18 temperature proxies that this guy last year or a couple of years ago published. He just averaged them up to see what it looked like. And sure enough, just like we know from history, there was a medieval warm period. This is where we know historically the Vikings arrived in Greenland, started farming, something you haven't been able to do since. A few hundred years later, the civilization there died out. Farms got frozen out. Climate change. And then you had the Little Ice Age. Tim's River in London, freezing over in the wintertime. People ice skating. Doesn't happen anymore. What happened, you know, what causes these things? Now, the IPCC, of course, says, well, since this warming period that we're in for the last 100 years, right there, since it coincides with increasing CO2, it must have been the CO2 causing the temperature rise. Again, cause and effect, right? Maybe, maybe not. Well, OK, if CO2 caused that, what caused all this other stuff, you know? They're, they're just ignoring natural climate variability, just totally ignoring it. OK, conclusions. I wanted to allow enough time for questions. Um, I think that the latest satellite data 
plus a simple model taken together is enough to convince me that it's a real possibility that the climate changes we've seen in the last hundred years have been driven more by nature than mankind. Okay? If that's true, then our CO2 increases really, you know, us pumping CO2 into the atmosphere really doesn't matter that much. Uh, in fact, I think science ought to dispassionately, objectively address the possibility that on the whole, more CO2 might be better for nature than negative. Anytime there's a climate change, there's winners and losers. There's no such thing as having a change in nature that, you know, where everyone's a winner. During El Nino, trillions of animals in the sea die. But that's okay because it's Mother Nature causing it. Trees, we know the existence of trees on the earth make a different climate system than if there were no trees. Why is it that that's cool, but the existence of humans causing an impact on climate isn't? It just doesn't even make sense philosophically. Okay. And I think that the IPCC view, I, I think most of these scientists really do believe that the climate system is sensitive and that they've interpreted things correctly. I think it's pretty easy to show that they haven't and that they've com confused cause and effect. And I'm just trying to get, uh, all I need is someone on the other side to look at it objectively and think about what I'm saying. Because uh, it's not that hard to understand. It took me a while because I'm not a modeler. Uh, but I always had this gut feeling that there was something not going on about cause and effect that they weren't taking into account. And so far, I'm, you know, a couple of years later, I'm more convinced of that than, than ever. And uh, I have stories to tell about the political motivations involved in the IPCC. You know, don't believe that it's a whole bunch of impartial scientists because there's no such thing as that. Okay. Do I dare go into policy? Because I have opinions on this, too, that are separate from the science. Some people say, but if there is any risk at all, shouldn't we avoid producing CO2? We did it for ozone depletion, right? You know, the Montreal Protocol, uh, they're banning out chlorofluorocarbons, refrigerants that cause ozone depletion, and I won't get into that whole argument, but let's just say that CFCs cause ozone depletion in the stratosphere, and that's a bad thing. Uh, you know, they've got an international agreement to reduce the manufacture of these things, okay? And people point to that and say, see, we did it for CSCs, we can do it for CO2. No, it's, it's totally, you know, it's worlds apart. CFCs are a man-made chemical that we can find replacements for that have a specific use, you know, refrigerants or a cleaner maybe. Carbon dioxide is necessary for life on Earth. I mean, it, there's, there's no comparison at all. And in fact... It's kind of, for the time being, necessary for humans. Everything we do requires energy. Um, we use a buttload of energy, most of it, you know, summed up over the whole earth, if most of it is fossil fuels. There are no large scale replacements, uh, not in the short term. Um, you know, maybe 30, 40 years down the road, we'll have the technological advancements uh, to have large scale replacements. But so far, uh, there's nothing out there. You can whittle around the edges a little bit with, with wind and solar and whatever, biomass, but it, it, it doesn't attack the main problem. If there is a problem, which I don't believe there is. Uh, what about this fact that more CO2 increases agricultural productivity? Uh, we already know that. It's estimated that global agricultural productivity has gone up 20% just because of the extra CO2 we put in the atmosphere. The more we put in, the more Mother Nature gobbles up. And then this issue of, well, what about the warming? Isn't warming bad? I don't know. The temperature is going to change anyway. I think on average, humanity has always liked it a little warmer than cooler. Okay, sometimes I get the question, okay, then why did all, most of the countries of the world um, sign the Kyoto Protocol to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? Well, first of all, you've got to remember these are politicians. Follow the money, okay? Whoever controls energy on the earth, whoever controls carbon, <laughs> controls humanity. 
I mean, this is the ultimate power grab if, if governments can control <coughs> energy use. Okay? Um, why did all the poor countries agree? Because they see a big transfer of wealth coming. We're going to end up paying them for the right to pollute. We will buy, in effect, the right to pollute from them because they don't pollute much so that we can. Of course, eventually we will need replacements for fossil